In 2010, the Saba Wildlife Department formed a wildlife rescue unit to address the area's key conservation concerns. This is their story. I'm in Lahadatu on the eastern coast of Malaysian Borneo. Over recent years, this area has seen a lot of urban development and growth in oil palm plantations. This in turn has led to clashes between man and nature. Since the introduction of oil palm, elephants' paths have been blocked by huge plantations. This enormous development creates jobs and revenue for the local economy, but it also brings conflict. Big herds of elephants are one of the main issues facing communities here, often destroying crops, knocking down trees and even damaging houses. I'll be joining the Wildlife Rescue Unit halfway through their relocation of a herd of elephants, 24 strong, which are being transferred from the oil palm plantations and villages around the town of Lahadatu in eastern Sabah. We arrive at a small village outside Lahadatu. The elephants just wandered through here at night, scaring the villagers and causing concern in the community. We've just turned up to the site where the elephant was found this morning. As you can see, it's wallowing away in a small swamp and it's causing a bit of a stir. We've got a lot of local people gathering. The Wildlife Rescue Unit caught this big male elephant last night, roaming in a heavily populated area. The team tied him to trees, ready for a swift relocation in the morning to a place far from human settlements. We're going to use this rope to uh, position the elephant well before we transfer him into the crate. From where he is now, it's not easy for us to straight away put him into the crate. Is this a big elephant? Uh, he's a quite a huge one. He's about 8 feet and 5 inch. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any idea what he might weigh? Maybe about 2 tons or more. So that's, yeah. two, that's a 2 ton animal we have yeah. to get from out of this swamp and yep. into here. Yes. Uh, right, okay. Okay. The team has to carefully reposition the truck and cage before getting the go-ahead from Dr. Laura to start moving him into the cage. It seems like a huge job trying to move a two-ton animal and get it in this cage, but these guys are vastly experienced to what they do. So now I'm just going to try and muck in and help where I can and get these uncalloused hands a bit dirty. In order to usher him into the cage, a large truck pulls the chains yeah. through it. So here, this elephant, number 14 of this small herd, is about to be placed on this truck and then relocated to Tabin Wildlife Reserve. huge trunk. So elephants have around 100,000 muscles in their trunks. And they're beautiful animals. This might be the smallest species of elephant in the world, but it still weighs a huge amount. And it's even lifting this truck off its wheels on the left-hand side. The whole operation goes as smoothly as it could have. Thanks to this great team of workers, we managed to get him into the cage safely, ready for relocation. So here we are in Kampong Lion. Yes, Kampong Lion. And all the local people have come to wave the elephant goodbye, yes? Salamat Jalan Gaja. Yeah? All right, bye. Have you been noticing more or less human elephant conflict over the last few years? Uh, over the past few years, we received more and more report on human elephant conflict and also the elephant, the not only in the big plantation but also these elephant now are coming out to the village area, which is much more important issues as compared to when elephant come out in the plantation. We head to Tabin Wildlife Reserve, which is nearly 50 kilometers from Lahadatu town. At around the same size as Singapore, 
Tabin is one of the largest reserves in Sabah, a haven to thousands of species of rare plants and animals. So here we are in Tabin Wildlife Reserve, and all that's left to do is to attach a collar onto the elephant and then release it into the forest behind me. We need to tranquilize the elephant in order to attach a satellite collar to it. Without sedating the elephant, it would be near impossible to get the collar around his neck. Must have been a very strange day for you, Mr. Elephant. Captured, put in a cage, filled with drugs, and now released into the forest. But I promise it's for the greater good. They're just such beautiful, majestic animals. I don't know if you can pick up that really throaty voice, really throaty noise that's coming up. The elephant is making its way out now. You can tell the drugs are still really in its system. It's very, very dozy. It's just checking out its new surroundings, taking its first steps down. This collar is essential, so scientists studying the movement of elephants can track them and get a good idea of where they're traveling. Because once we understand their movements, we can start to create corridors that will help to prevent future conflicts and keep both animals and humans safe. Laura's just taken a blood sample, and now we've got to move away because there's no telling which way the elephant's going to move. JP, congratulations. Thank you. Elephant number 14, yeah. <laughs> congratulations. Number 14 safely back into the forest. <coughs> Goodbye elephant, Jalan Jalan.